Okay, so part two of our uh, video series on Virtuoso is the ability to use Verilog to uh, drive and test the uh, schematics that we've built. And so to do that, I'm going to, um, there's a number of different ways that we can launch Verilog. Uh, probably the easiest way, or the first way, is we'll open up the schematic. And I'm going to go here to launch, plugins, simulation, and I want to choose NC Verilog. Um, some of the older documentation talks about Verilog XL. Um, that's been deprecated in favor of Cadence's other product, this NC Verilog. And the way that this is going to work is um, we have to kind of use this dialog box and walk our way through the different steps. Um, it's kind of the, the, the picture here. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the little runner guy to initialize the design. And now we've done that, we can generate the net list from the schematic. And um, before I hit simulate, the next thing I want to do is actually define my test bench. And so to do that, I want to go here to uh, commands and edit test fixture and another pop-up window comes up and basically what this allows me to do is define the template and the Verilog code I'm just going to open up the the template code here for just a minute um, the template code here is showing us the template for the part that we're working with and so the way Verilog works of course is we have a module name um, the module here is called test. I've got some output wires, some registers that I'll use to set values, so A, B, C, N. And I'm going to have the full adder. Um, its instance is called top, and we have our inputs and outputs going into it. And then it says whatever we're going to do goes into the test fixture. And in fact, we can see that it's got this includes statement where it's going to include the test fixture.verilog code. Um, this is actually. Um, a VI file, so if I just do the um, escape colon quit, um, it'll exit out. Um, so now I actually want to look at the Verilog file itself. This is going to be the test fixture that we're going to use to test our full adder. And so the normal way that I do text fi test fixtures is I want to go through all of the different combinations and I want to stop if I get an output that's not right. And so to do that, what I want to do is um, set the input, let it settle, and then check the output. I like to do that using a clock. And so I'm going to um, go ahead and type in what I believe to be uh, a useful Verilog test bench for this code. And if you're not real familiar with Verilog, um, maybe go uh, read some documentation about it. Okay, so the whole simulation file is here. Um, let's take a quick walkthrough. Uh, again, if you're not terribly familiar with Verilog, but maybe this will help figure out what's going on. Um, the first thing is I have a register that is the clock. The uh, initial is the first code that runs, and the first thing we do is assign the clock to be zero, and then forever, as long as the simulation is running, um, we will do this block of code, which is to um, make the clock equal to the not clock after one Verilog delay. So every delay to period in the simulator, uh, this turns into a nice digital clock. This is a pretty typical pattern from other Verilog sources. The other thing I have is I have a list of expected values. Um, the bottom three values here, the least significant bits of the values are the um, inputs A, B, and C. Well, A, B carry in. 
The last two are what I expect the output to be. So for instance, adding 0, 0, and 0, I would expect 0 for the sum, 0 for the carry. 1 would be 1 for the carry, 1 would be 1 for the carry. Here's 2, so that should be uh, 0 for the sum, 1 for the carry. Here's 1, uh, 2 again, 2 again, no, that's not right. So that's still 2, and then the bottom guy is 3, and so that would be 1 for the carry, 1 for the output. Um, then we have um, an integer, which is just used as a number that doesn't get synthesized into digital values. It's used for my for loop, which we'll see here inside in a minute. Um, here the idea is that we have um, the initial values get assigned to the a, b, and c in, and then we're going to go through eight times through this for loop waiting for the clock to have a rising edge. And when we have a rising edge, that's the next clock period, so we can then compare um, the c out uh, to the value that we'd expect it to be, the sum to be the value that we expect it to be. If they're not, then we stop the simulation. And if we are not on the last iteration of the loop, then we will assign, oh, these need to be plus one. Um, a, B, and C in to be the next value, so that the next time the for loop runs, I get the next output. And finally, if we make it through all of this, um, we want to finish the, the simulation, otherwise it will just run forever. Um, if I make any changes, I want to make sure I save the file. Again, this is VI, so it's escape, escape, and W to uh, write the file. I'll come over to the test fixture window, click on check syntax, and it says everything was analyzed successfully. So now that that's done, um, I'll actually just quit the file, right? So I just want to make sure that I have these names right, C out and sum. So I'm going to go back up here and verify, sure enough, C out and sum were the two outputs that we used. So all right, everything looks like it should be ready to go. So now I'll hit OK. Um, I'll close this window, and I'm back to this uh, Verilog integration window, and we are now ready to simulate the, the, the Verilog. So I'll click on the simulate. Okay, so um, SimVision has come up, and I see I have the module under test, the unit under test. Um, if I expand here, I can actually see the top module. Um, these are the, sig the signals that were defined in the test fixture. This was the module that was instantiated. This is the um, uh, full adder that we created in the schematic view. If I were to click on it, I can see its input and its output, as well as its internal nets, and I can even expand in to see each of its logic gates. What I'm really interested in is, does it work? And so um, what I'll do here is go back to my, my top module. And, and typically, the way that we see these things is as signals change over time. And so what I'm going to do is just add all of these signals um, to the waveform window. So I'll right click and say, send to waveform window. And when that pops up, um, I'll see here I can click on the Run button. And this will run my simulation. Now what I found is it stopped. And um, it stopped here. I would expect this to be 8 if the for loop finished, but it's not. So if I look down at the simulation window down here, I can see that it says simulation stopped at time. It didn't hit finish. It hit that dollar stop. So clearly something's wrong. And if I take a look at my A and B and, and everything, I see I have A, 1, B is 0, and C in is 1. That should be a sum of 2. And if that was the case, then carry out um, should be a 1, and sum should be a 0. But if I look at my test um, for case number 5, because that's where I'm in, um, let's see, vals of 5. Oh, I see here. So this is showing me the values in decimal which are really not what I want. So if I right click, I can change the radix to be hexadecimal. And man, that doesn't actually help. I really want to see this as binary. 
And in binary, for instance, I can see that case 5 should have had um, a 1, 0, 1. This was um, our sum out, and it really should be carry out. In fact, I would argue that probably both of these are wrong. Oh, sorry, that's our next case. So um, I have a problem where my test case is actually wrong. So the problem is I can't change the Verilog code and rerun it here. Like, um, there's debug for other things, but I don't see a debug for um, Verilog. So what I'm going to have to do is exit SimVision, go back to my test case here. So that means go back to edit test fixture, go back to my Verilog code, and if I go back and look at my values, remember we have carry out is bit four, sum out is bit one, and here in case five, um, I have uh, sum out being set to one, so I need to change that to be one zero. This needs to be one zero because we're carrying, we have two bits set. Um, and then there at the bottom we have three, so that looks right. So um, I'll save it. Let me click on the check syntax button just to make sure that there's no syntax errors. Um, now I can do my WQ, and now I can launch SimVision and have it recompile everything again. So we'll click on SimVision. Um, we'll close this. We'll add these to our waveform window. And we'll click on run. And this time I see I got to the finish. So unfortunately, it seems like editing the Verilog file doesn't automatically make SimVision reload it or recompile it. So that would be the cycle that you'd have to go back through is, is edit the Verilog, come back, and change things. It would be the same thing if you found a bug in your schematic. You'd have to go back to the schematic and then restart the, the, the system. The one thing you want to make sure you don't do is click on the runner guy again. Because if you click on the runner guy, that's to reinitialize the run. And so it'll erase the directory that includes your test fixture. So once you've done it the first time, unless you really want to reinitialize it, don't do it again. So now that I'm done with SimVision, I've convinced myself that this is right. I close these windows. Make sure you close all of the windows, especially this last SimVision window, or else you won't be able to uh, launch another SimVision. One last little bit of Verilog Kung Fu that I want to go through is to create a behavioral model of a schematic part. We would do this to make simulations a little bit faster. Um, if I had to go all the way down to simulate every transistor in a design, uh, it would make uh, larger, uh, higher level simulations so much slower. So what I want to do is I want to make a new cell and so in our cell view here, um, I want to change um, uh, this type here to be Verilog. And I want to make sure that I've got the word behavioral typed in on this field. Um, the first time I did this, I, it, it was functional. Um, in this case, I don't want to define the function. I just want to define the behavior. And so we're going to open that with the text editor. And for some reason, this text editor shows up as being a nice Verilog editor, whereas the other Verilog editor was VI. Um, I don't pretend to even understand. But since this is our full adder, um, I can come in here now and, and define the behavior of it. So for example, I could just simply say that um, C out, or sorry, sum is equal to A plus B. And actually what I could even really do here is say, uh, why are we, um,
So this would truly be a very behavioral simulation. Um, I don't care about the actual implementation of it. I'm going to let the Verilog tools do all of it for me. Um, instead, um, I'm just going to define the logical behavior of how this works. Um, the other way that we could go about doing this would be to actually um, write out the um, uh, logic gate version of this. So, um, you know, for uh, I'm, I'm less interested in, in that than um, than this at this point. So um, I hit my check and save, and it says I have a syntax error. We have a parse error. So I have to view the parser log file from here. And it did not like my D equals. So it needs to have that assigned. So now I can do my check and save. And check and save said everything's OK. So now I'm done. Um, I can exit out, and now I have a behavioral version of the same thing. So theoretically now, um, I could run a simulation on the behavioral model or the schematic. OK, so now that we have a full adder defined um, at the behavioral, schematic, and symbol level, let's see if we can't use it to build something more complex, like a two-bit adder. So I'm going to make a new cell view and we're going to call it full adder 2 it's going to be a Verilog behavioral model and I'm going to hit OK here and I've already uh, got one typed up here Maybe a little bit of clean up and so basically what I've got is I've got full adder with two input lot two bit inputs coming in um, for A and B and a single carry in, uh, a two bit output and a single carry out. Um, I've got my wire names for some internal wires. I've got two full adders um, and I'm just assigning all of their inputs and outputs together. Um, again, this is pretty typical Verilog. Um, the one thing you may not be familiar with is the concatenation of two wires. but uh, trust me, it's all valid. If I hit check and save, it's going to come back and say, hey, everything's OK. And um, if I were to go back to my library now, I actually see that I have both a behavioral model and a symbol model already created. And so now, just as we did before, um, I can go and um, uh, launch the uh, NC Verilog on this. And now look, I'm in full adder 2, and I'll initialize that directory. That's a different directory than what it was before. And when I generate netlist, I want to be able to go to setup here. And this view is actually letting me pick the order and the availability of the different functional models. So for example, if I really, really wanted to have the lower level schematic first, I could put that first in the design. Um, in this case, the behavioral will come first. So parts that I've used that include uh, behavioral models, uh, I'd get them before I'd get their lower level implementations. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit OK. And uh, we'll just go ahead and very quickly edit a text fixture. Yep, we're back to using VI. Um, I know that's kind of silly, but that's the tools we, we have here. Um, and so I'm not even going to bother with the text fi test fixture. I just want to see what it's going to do. So um, let's say we're going to add 2 and oops, and 3, 2 and 1 together with the carry in. Should give me 4. And then let's make that. So 2 and 3 is 5, and 1 is 6. So that will give me an odd number. Do um, something like that. So I'll check my syntax. 
everything was analyzed, I hit OK, and so let's give it a couple couple time delays, and then we'll hit finish just to see that we get to the finish point. And as we did before, I'll add these to my waveform display, and we'll click on that. And sure enough, I hit my finish, and um, let's see. I got absolutely nothing for my sum. So, hmm. So something happened where my output actually didn't get connected to my input. And so I'd have to go back in and debug that. Um, but that's generally the flow of how things are, are supposed to happen here.